So I center the clay. And open it up, and you notice I'm just making kind of a V. You can get closer if anybody wants to, like, get up close and see. Mm -hmm. He won't get you dirty. And you won't fall in. No. Yeah. And there's a chair right here. Yep. In fact, I've been known to stand right behind him and take pictures while he's throwing. It's our, our version of ghost. It's our version of ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Not a very good one. Well, no, it's ridiculous. We get that question all the time. It's awesome. Yeah. There's no romance in this at all. No. No. Much like a vice grip, you push, push to a certain thickness and pull up the walls. And because the clay is plastic, I can do this. The clay were not plastic. It would just either fall apart if it's too plastic. It's like it wouldn't stand up. That's why I, I was showing you that the clay body. It took years to devise to make a clay body that worked. Not all clays are made the same, so it's important to learn about that. And you'll notice the finger marks. So throwing is like making a recording. And initially when I started, I could see I was not too steady. So I trained myself to do this evenness. And the result was that I got more confident as this became uh, to look more confident. So I pulled up two times, and I pull up a third time. <coughs> and the rib allows me to shape the piece and throw it thinner. And you'll notice I'm not using any water. Uh, water is the enemy. And I, what I mean by that is if I uh, oversaturate this, it'll collapse. It won't, it won't stand up like I'm having this stand up now. So I'm essentially what I'm doing is distributing the clay. There's more clay here. I think I can even push this bottom part out further. That little wobbling, <clears throat> you have to be able to think through that. Mind over matter. I'm going to show you the thickness of the piece right here. So it's like that thick. It's not magic. It's just work. <laughs> work. Yeah. Practice, practice. And you notice it's thicker at the top. That allows me to do this. And I like the finger marks because it shows process. It's not machine made, it's made by a human being. And I incorporate that into just everything that I do. And there's a little unevenness at the top here. 
when I'm liking it. Has anybody thrown at the school? Is it still the same two speed? Yeah. Hmm. You should get somebody to. What? Mm -hmm. uh. So I'm going to close this up. So as I'm closing, this gets thicker and thicker, and I have to thin it out. But it gives me a different kind of solution for the top here. And that uneatness is starting to look pretty nice, actually. Mm -hmm. The Japanese potters used to make fishing floats for the fishermen, and they would do something like this. Just close it up. Okay, I, are you ready for... Okay, this air? is the, the denouement. This is the air support. Yeah. <laughs> More air. Yeah. Remember Bill Cosby? Why is there air? air? Not just for basketball. No, that's for... And then... I used to demonstrate for a class, and I had this kid from Sicily, Giovanni, and I would pick up a piece off the wheel, like I'm going to demonstrate here, I'm going to cut it off, and he's this big Italian kid. John, I'm scared. You pick it up. <laughs> you do it. John. You do it. I said, okay. So what I... You saw that I use this wood tool, and what I'm doing is compressing the clay and drying it out a little bit. And that, you know, if I use drier hands, cleaner hands, I can grasp a piece. There's a, there's a V shape there, and I can pick it up gently. And if I have any finger marks, that's a Zen. That's a Zen mark. <laughs> 